Yo, yo, what's going down, you guys? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing, baby, representing Team Kings of Games. And uh, today I'm coming at you guys actually with an update of uh, your Sinjus. Yeah, baby. This is a deck, man. Like, this is a deck. And, like, it's actually, it exists, you know? It's an incredible deck, too. It's one of those um, decks that can, you can play it like super control. You can play it stun. You can play it going second with Kaijus. You can have a mixture of both. I got a mixture of both. Not with Kaijus, but just like a build that can go first or second, regardless of whether you're going to lose the dice roll. There are certain cards, um, in the main deck, like Trap Tricks, that I just had to, um, like, get rid of those just to, um, stay afloat at a certain point, um, when I was at YCS Las Vegas. So, um, those are not there, but for the most part, I have almost everything I, um, I need. There's just certain cards that just aren't in here because I had to get rid of them for cash. Um, just, I got family, man. Got kids, got bills to pay and stuff. So, um, you guys know what it is, man. You know, you know the struggle. But anyways, so yeah, like, this deck's crazy, though. I really love it. I've always, always wanted to, like, um, keep it at 60. And I never really dropped it down. I love the 60 card Yosinji deck. It's just really awesome. Um, oh yeah, I got rid of my Madolce traps by accident when I sold my binder. I wasn't even trying to. They were just there. So the Madolce Knights and the Madolce Tea Party is a crazy text. I came up myself, by the way. Nobody gave that idea to me. It was um, in this deck. Definitely recommend if you guys play Yosinji, try those out because they're really nutty. But anyways, yeah, Yosinji is very slept on, you guys. It's a very strong art type. Um, I'm a rogue enthusiast, you guys. I believe every deck has potential. Just needs the right person to get his hands on it and just figure that out. And work through the kinks and the stuff that people feel are bricky and the stuff that kind of like deters people from playing it. I do have a PayPal and a Patreon and I would greatly appreciate it if any of you guys have the bread. Just a penny, you know. It doesn't matter. What matters is that your heart is there, you know. It doesn't matter how much you give. What matters is that you do give and that shows that you really do care, you know. And I appreciate that. Support your boy. Help me eat, man, because this stuff ain't easy. And this is all free time that I'm not really, you know getting compensated for and I, I try my best to not neg but you know I'm trying to still make sure that I can you know survive and eat and still continue to just get the cards and stuff for the channel and thank you to the subs who do you know donate thank you to the subs who do help me with sending cards in the mail and you know who you are when I say that so thank you very much um, but let's go ahead and get to the profile you guys really great deck honestly pretty easy to build um, outside of some staples that you need like I don't have to get out trap the secret rare and you know trap tricks aren't there outside of some staples you know it's just it's, it's a really decent deck you can play it Pretty budget, so let's start the monster lineup. We're rocking with uh, three comma ones. <laughs> Probably um, one of the most aggressive Yosinjus uh, for when you are going second. Um, he has a really cool effect, uh, a return to hand. That's a when he's face up and not hard ones return. So like you can have um, a comma one, for example, and then use the bounce, and then summon another comma one, and then use the bounce because it's once while the cards face up on the field. So it's very similar, reminiscent to um wind up magician that's all i can think of like it's not hard ones per turn so if you have multiples you can just keep bouncing and that's what this is what makes people want to um play like kaijus and stuff like that and it bounces any face of card your opponent controls because people would, like kaiju you and use the common one to bounce a kaiju and then do it again that actually is a really good option for going second it's very consistent you can get to common one very excessively and just being able to kaiju window you know bounce it kaiju window again if you need to it's just really really nice like because you could kaiju window and then like el shadow fusion another one then you could just bounce that and then kaiju again so there's synergy with this in kaijus and lava golem you know not really is a thing because you need your normal summon this deck but with kaijus yeah it's incredible outside of that it's a spot removal it just bounces face up cards and every yosiju when they're normal uh when it's, okay when they're normal summon they grant you an additional normal for another yosinju which is really cool i play uh three copies of comma two these are the og yosinjus there's some newer support not new but newer um this card actually can just attack your um it can attack your opponent directly when it does the the battle damage is halved but um what's really cool is it pairs very well with comma three comma three is probably like my favorite one because it searches and i love searching um so this guy actually if uh yosinju monster you control does battle damage to your opponent you can add a yosinju card um from your deck to your hand so like it searches any of the monsters and it also searches the spells and traps and i play like i think almost every yosinju monster and spell and trap in this deck there are some that I really, really love that I feel like should be played. It's like the pendulums are really good. I play the pendulum ones in here. Um, and you do have like the counter trap. The counter trap can be live with those. And this just allows you to like just grind your opponent out of through their back rows and through their resources. Because you're constantly just every turn. These go back to hand like spirits. So once you get access to two, one, two, and three, you can just boom, boom, boom. Attack directly, affect the search of counter trap or the Yosinju sword sting. And then just bounce on in phase with the sword sting set. Bounce. Next turn, do the same thing. It's like this loopy kind of um, snowballing thing. And I really like it. Like you you keep your follow-ups because the Yosinjus go right back to where they were. So like you can net advantage off three where you start plusing because you realize, okay, I've looped one, two, and three like one or two turns. And like this is the third turn. And I've like literally resolved three to search. 
And once you get training grounds off three, it really rewards you then. Cause like, that's the first search I go for. If I didn't open training grounds, I use three to get training grounds. So then as I'm dropping one, two, and three for the next turn, I load counters on the training ground. So that then when I resolve three, I can get the search off three and the search off training ground. So then you could go double counter trap or counter trap plus sword sting. That can just be the end all be all for some decks. They just can't handle that. So you gotta put respect on the OG of Sinjus. They kind of started it. They they made it. You know, you Sinju side frames. Euphoria, man. Really, this is taking me back. Um, and then we played three Sabu. Sabu is really insane, especially because I'm playing the pendulums in here. Um, he just generates so much advantage. This card's like naturally a plus one or two. Uh, just depending on the composition of, your, composition of your hand and how you use him. And it's really how you play your cards, you guys. You can copy a list card for card and still play it very poorly. So, you know, it's how you play your cards. It's not what you play, it's how you play it. Uh, we have two copies of Izna. Izna is incredible. Um, that protection just really stuns back rows. It can stun certain back rows. Just it really helps you to get through your uh, get through back rows to get your push. Sometimes it could just prevent um, certain cards from interacting with you because um, of its discard effect. Um, and then on field you're drawing, so it's really good. But just kind of having like that pseudo hand trap protection. You know your opponent cannot activate cards in response to a Yosinju normal special. It's really cool because I'm not gonna lie, solemn judgment is like ooh. Woo! It just makes you pass, right? Because if you're one normal summon gets stopped, then boom, you're out of steam. Just like that. It's really quickly. So, like, the right negate can just end this uh, deck's turn, but having access to this and it being searchable through comma 3, training grounds, and tanky, I think that um we're, we're looking pretty good. It's shaping up to be very easy to um, get access to it. And then for the uh, Yosinju Pendulums, let me actually do this. Yeah, that's better. I like how that looks. So for the Pendulums, I play um, three Shinchu L's and also three Shinchu R's. What I really like is actually they stack on each other so you can do locks where you can get multiples and then everything can't be targeted for like attacks and effects and stuff like that. They do have awesome protection effects kind of replacements and I honestly, I like L. Like So for example, on field, your opponent can't target um, your Shinchu monsters with card effects except this one. But if you have two on field, your opponent just can never target your Shinju monsters with card effects until they find a way to deal with that that lock. So it's like Dupe Frog, but for effects. And then this can be literally Dupe Frog just for attacks. And then it's scale effect. If a Yosinju monster you control will be destroyed by battle card effect, destroy this card instead. It's just protection on top of protection. It's just really good. And this guy just lets you boost so that you can pin some in higher monsters. I play one die block. This card is extremely aggressive. You just keep on looping it. You really only need one if you play it correctly. And then the Misak as well. This card, these just let you go more aggro going second. They're searchable, so when you open channeling, you can just, if you already had your scales and you open channeling, you can use channeling to get one of these. And that way, when you pin summon under the protection of Izna, they can't respond. And because the effect is on summon, they basically just can't respond, which is really cool. So there's ways that you can make it like a super poly, kind of in a way, where you're just pulling it, they just can't stop it, it's happening. So that's what I was saying, this deck is really good. It, it has that balance of being not a jack of all trades, but being not very hardcore going first or hardcore going second. It has this equilibrium that I really like, and you can just manipulate your resources with this deck. So it's really cool. It's really fun. That's it for the monsters. I'm not really an avid fan of hand traps, but for the decks that I feel need hand traps, thank you, Maddie, by the way, for sending me those, then I can actually play them for those. Um, but I really, I don't know what it is. I just, there's just bones in my body that just tell me don't play hand traps. I hate them. I don't know what it is. It's just not for me. I know competitive players top with hand traps, but I, I mean, I top without hand traps, so it shows that you don't really need them. It's just personal preference, I guess. Uh, for spells, we play three copies of Tinky. Yeah, baby. And honestly, best card in my deck, Training Grounds. This is how you outgrind some of the best decks, and this is also how you just stay in the grind. Um, each time you have Sinju Monster is no more special, you place a Yosin counter on this, and it stacks. So when you go normal comma one, normal comma two, normal comma three, you already got three counters on it. So then you can um, remove one counter to boost all your monsters, or you can just remove three to add one Yosinju card from your deck or graveyard, or graveyard, or graveyard. That's why I'm saying grind, grind. Because you can burn through three sword things or three of the counter trap and still keep adding them, just looping them back. So you can play certain cards at one, and once you're done with them and they die, you can just bring it right back off your sin training grounds. So like once you get the snowball going, you have one, two, and three. Every turn, you're loading three counters on this and resolving three. Attack directly with two, three to search, use this to search. So every turn, you're getting sword sting and also the counter trap. Uh, which is really cool. So you're getting sourcing and secret move. And come to find out, as I learned um, a ruling that I wasn't aware of, you can activate secret move with the Yosin Pendulums in scale, which is really cool. So it makes it to where the guys going back to hand at the end phase doesn't hurt so much. So you can really use the counter trap to stop lightning storm and stop evenly match and other cards like that. 
Um, so I just really love this card. Yosinji Training Grounds is busted, you guys. It adds any Yosinji card from your deck. I don't see why you wouldn't play it, you know, but it's just personal preference. This is closer to pure Yosinji. In fact, it actually just is pure Yosinji. Like, the traps are generic, so they're not really belonging to an archetype, except for, like, the Dinomecius is a Paleozoic trap. But other than that, it's basically just pure Yosinji, and I love it this way. I really do. I played three channelings. Um, I really do like when I do have the skills, I can just go straight for Dibok. Just use Izna to protect it, so you pin summon. And everything you pin summon is under the protection of Izna, so they can't, like, strike the summon. And then Dibok's going off on summon, so you just get so much plays going without your opponent being able to respond, which I love so much. And the other beauty of this card, if you realize it, it does say if you control no monsters, right, you activate one of the falling effects. But if you continue reading, it's not once per turn, so if you open double... You do is the first one to get your scales and the second one uh, to basically get you, you know, your higher level monster, which is really cool. So it doesn't really brick as I was, because I was like, dang, is this card once per turn? Like, you know, when you're playing and you kind of just skim through the effects and you're like, okay, I, I have a generalization of what it does. And then you start to realize, oh, snap, it's not once per turn. It's so like, it's fine. It's, it's good. It's really good. Uh, I play one wind worship. This card is just high key busted. It really is. Like, you can plus very heavily off of this card. And then once you're done with it, if you need it again just to get your resources back or just refill your hand, which your Sinji's already do because your cards go back to hand like spirit monsters, you can just use training grounds to add it from grave to hand. But it also lets you dodge certain um, effects because it returns your stuff. So it can dodge like targeting effects and stuff. Very skillful depending on how you use it. Or you could just be greedy and just use it to draw. But sometimes I like to use it more interactive where I'm like dodging like, you know, certain targeting effects like Valor Impermanent stuff. Just really cool. Double or nothing, because you could go into Utopia Double very easy. Just normal a comma. Normal any one of the three commas, and then drop another you send you, and there's Utopia Double. Uh, and then we play um, one Whirlwind. I know that this card doesn't really ever see play, even back in the day. Pure Sinju wasn't really, like, a popular trend. Some people were trying it, but it wasn't, like, meta ever. Um, but this card's actually really good. So every time your Sinju's just getting bounced, you just get to target one of your opponent's cards and just bounce it. So as your cards are going back to your hand on end phase, you're just grinding them out, like... Picking apart back rows so that they have to then set their back row on their turn and wait a turn for it to be live again. Or just bouncing column monsters. Because once this is activated, they can't like negate the activation of the effect unless they're negating the effect. But if it's like a hardcore negate the activation of a spell or trap, they can't respond basically. So you're just clearing threats regardless. Um, that's it for the spells. Doo, 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 doo. Um, if you got desires, definitely play desires, but um, I've been flipping desires, yo. I've been flipping them like hotcakes. So now for the traps. Uh, this card's busted. Uh, it's an Omni Negation. It's like Infernity Barrier, because Infernity's were out first, so I definitely can reference that. Um, all you have to do is like control your Sinji monster or like have your Sinji card. Like it's it's just disgusting. And as I just learned, I didn't even know. I used to think, okay, I have to have a pendulum your Sinju out on the field so that this can stay live because you have to control. But as I learned Someone taught me that you can just have the scales and it still works. So you can just scale L and be like, all right, my guys get bounced and you can still activate this. So it's pretty busted. It's an Omni Negation, very slept on. And you can search it and also add it from grave to hand. So you can just keep out grinding. So this is like your Salaman Great um, Roar. The Roar, the negating, I think it's Rage or Roar, whichever one it is. This is like your Salaman Great Roar, but better because it's not hard once per turn. And also you can add it from the graveyard back just like they can, but you can add multiple. So it's it's actually superior, and you don't really need to keep a link for it to be live. So I just like it. It's, it's just way better. Um, it's like one of the best Omni Negates, honestly. Um, then we have three swords things. This card's disgusting. It really is. It's just a double compose. So you like reveal up to two of your Sinji monsters with different names, and then you just target that many um, cards your opponent controls, and you can just bounce them, which is really, really, really good. Um, so these are your Sinju traps. The archetype specifics, you're, you're normally, uh, when you go for pushes, you don't normally go for OTK pushes, you go for poke, 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 bounce my guys. So when you're doing like that poke play where you're like poke, 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 bounce my guys, you just got to remember, keep in mind, make sure you make it your your job. Like make sure you go out of your way to get access to training grounds and so that you can use three in training grounds every turn, comma one, comma two, comma three. Training grounds, search this, comma three, search this, or vice versa. And then when you um, set, you know, when you set these in phase, your commas go back. You're making sure that you can constantly have interruptions every turn. So, like, it's like Salaman Greats, kind of, where you're just always recycling your traps and just grinding your opponent out of their resources. And you're decent at going second. And there's not very many hand traps that work against this deck. And that's facts. Like, seriously. Uh, we have three crackdowns. So, we're starting with negations now. Because, like, I flipped my Solemns. I didn't realize, like, so much was left in my binder. I should have double-checked my binder before I sold it. Because I sold cards that I actually need for my decks. 
Um, but I, uh, I have three crackdowns, three loss wins. I still like these because you don't pay life wins, but like strikes can sometimes be better because it just clears the card too and it's a counter trap. But crackdowns are basically like just Widow Anchor. Once you take the monster, it's negated. Lost wins really disgusting in this format, especially with Shadows, Spirals, Salamand Greats being a theme. Also play Double Breakthrough because I acknowledge the fact that um, Dinko Seca can kind of hurt sometimes. Um, it just depends how many traps you open, but just the fact that you can get a chance to out the Dinko potentially just having a breakthrough in skill but other than that it's also more negation i just really wanted my traps to actually be able to do something you know to stop plays so when you play combo decks these are really good to have like all of these traps including the source thing and if you play other like weird matchups where they're kind of grindy and they're more mid-range or they're back row heavy you just have final misses um compulse can help out as well um torrential is just generic it's just so good and then i also play the drownings um, since this deck's already really decent against back rows, I felt my traps should have more interactions against combo decks because those are the decks that can be really scary. Um, so I like the of the trap lineup. I also like that you can pair drowning with the counter trap um, because, like I like I said, somebody taught me you can just have the scale and leave no your synergy monsters and just have the scale to keep this live. So you can drowning them, then negate it, chain the counter trap, clean it up. Um, but drowning is just superior, the superior mirror force to play in this deck because it's the best mirror force. Honestly, it shuffles. And um, Yosinjus just never really leave their monsters on the field, so it's really clutch. And then Torrential, just in case you actually need to clear your own field for like drowning or anything like that. Um, but the other thing is like Torrential is Torrential. It's Raigeki on your opponent's turn. And if Lightning Storm is good, then this card's good too. So I don't want to like even like. There's no debate on whether Torrential is good or not. It's at three, and Compulse is insane too. So is Dino Mishes. So even though I don't have the best traps like Dimensional Barriers. Um, right now are actually in my Paleozoics. I should not have been lazy. I should grab those because Maddie actually sent me Sanctums and Barriers. So those could be in here too. Like honestly, the Sanctums and Barriers could be in here. But I'm actually really enjoying this lineup. I kind of just like it this way. But um, like if you want to play it more competitive, I definitely recommend like try Barriers and Sanctums. They're just really good this format, honestly. Um, but yeah, those are my Paleozoics right now. I got so many deck profiles to do. No matter how much I do, my workload never goes away. No matter how many requests I fulfill, people just keep asking me for stuff. And I'm, I'm, the work just never stops, you know. Like, it gets to a point sometimes where I just want to say no and just be like, no, I just want to chill. But I try my hardest to please you guys. And hopefully at the end of it, I, you know, something's just going to pay off. That's why I do be asking, you know, can you guys donate? It's not like I'm just saying, oh, I just want a handout. It's like, you know, I'm trying my hardest to earn it. Um, but the extra deck, we have Duramadol. This card's just disgusting in this deck. Like, seriously, he's so good. Um, we have the Wind Charmer. Um, just because she can give you a follow-up, and it's just nice to um, end on this sometimes. There are certain matchups when you can actually get it, because people play Droll, and you can just use her to Link Spam. Or not necessarily Link Spam, but Link Climb. But I just like the follow-up that's there. Um, it's similar to Great Fly, but just this ass from Grave, this ass from Deck. But I like them both, and I like the Duarma. So these are kind of like only can be played in like certain decks. Like this archetype can make all of these, so why not make these your your Link Twos of choice? Because they're all gonna replace themselves in one way, shape, or form. Even this can recur cards, so these are just really good. Uh, Borolo to out anything that can't be targeted, and then War Sword um, for when you do go crazy and you pin summon. So like you wanna like. Comma, 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 you know, link, <sighs> pin, because the pendulums, you know, you are playing pendulums in this deck. So, like, when a couple L's and R's are in your extra deck, if you open zones with the link two, you can actually pin summon two from extra deck. So, just because this deck has the pendulum mechanic, its ceiling can be higher in certain niches. It's a little convoluted because it's not going to consistently happen in a perfect world, but when it does come up, you'd be like, dang, I didn't know this deck can be that aggressive. And then generics. We have Dweller. Baguska, Tornado, Lightning Shidori is A1 in this deck, Dugaris, Castell, Silent Honor Arc, we have Tornado, I mean not Tornado, Exiton, I remember a format back in like 2014 format, like Dolls, you know, like Shadows, Burning Abyss, Necros, Cleeforts, Infernoids, you know, like, ah, uh, Satella Knights, Yang Zings, Ritual Beast, oh my god, I missed that format, these used to be the, like the most the best rank fours in the game. They were the like the most popping rank fours ever. Yeah, Konami really overshadowed these. And then we got the Utopia double package, so you can just steal free wins. Uh, so yeah, that's my Yosinger deck profile, you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Hopefully you were entertained and learned a little bit too. It's always fun when you're learning and having fun at the same time. That's like the best plus ever. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. God bless you. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content, and you will be hearing from me soon, yo. Peace.